on digital radio, FM, your smart speaker, and on BBC Sounds, BBC Radio Scotland. 24 minutes to nine is the time you're listening to Good Morning Scotland. The Scottish Government's being urged to confront the rising tide of domestic abuse. Leading King's Council, Thomas Ross, is calling on ministers to mirror the approach that's been taken to tackling sex offenders by introducing a register of abusers to deter them from targeting their partners. It comes hard on the heels of data suggesting Police Scotland record seven such incidents every hour. Well, Thomas Ross is with us now. Good morning to you. Good morning, Gary. Uh, seven incidents every hour sounds like a huge number. Is this a figure that is rising, do you think? It, it seems to me that it's rising, and uh, I think it's time we should have a discussion about it to consider what can be done. Well, you're talking about a register. How would that work in practice? We already have a register for sex offenders, and obviously it's a register that nobody wants to be on, you know. So it's a, a model which is already in existence, and, and the basis would be that anybody convicted of domestic violence would be on it. I think it would also be important to give people who were on it the chance to come off it by undertaking counselling and the like. But, you know, I'm no expert. I'm really just trying to get a discussion going about the subject, Gary, because no, there's absolutely. far too much of it. Yeah, no, but in terms of how the sex offenders register works, what does that do in terms of deterring people? Is it a case of checking in with the authorities? Is it a case yeah. of reporting the fact you're on the register to prospective employers, etc.? All of those things, Gary. So they would have to register with the police within a short time of the conviction, and then they would have to keep the police advised of their address. Like if they moved, they would have to notify the police. But, uh, you know, I think it might operate as a deterrent because obviously, uh, you know, there's social stigma regarding people who are on the sex offenders register. Hopefully it would operate in the same way in relation to domestic abuse. And we might save some women's lives. You know, women are literally been punched and kicked to death in the west of Scotland and we don't seem to be doing very much about it. But in terms of how the authorities might operate such a scheme, they're already under pressure. Um, we know, of course, that they find it difficult sometimes keeping up with those on the sex offenders register. Well, I would, and undoubtedly, people will break the conditions as they do with the sex offenders register. You know, but many, many people comply with the conditions because they want to come off it. You know, and if they're on the sex offenders register and they're convicted of breaches of the conditions, then they're going to stay on the register for longer. So there's a fairly powerful incentive to cooperate. You know, I, I don't know. I just think, you know, causing a bit of inconvenience to wife beaters compared to saving women's lives, you know, I know what side I'm on. Well, it's not just uh, women, of course, it's children too. And yeah. that is one of your concerns here, isn't it, given your own experience? Yeah, absolutely. You know, kids are damaged by it, you know. So, uh, but, it, you know, it's not about me, Gary. I'm fine, you know. It's the people who are still being subjected to domestic violence I'm concerned about. Would you be OK telling us a wee bit about your own experience? Yeah, well, I mean, I, I, I watched my mum being a victim of it, you know, when I was a child. And uh, I, I finally decided to speak about it. It's taken 50 years. But, you know, the reason I'm speaking about it is simply to draw attention to the debate, that, that's the only reason for it. You know, somebody who's wiser than me said, if I talked about that, then it might attract some publicity and it might allow a discussion. And it's worked because I'm on here talking to you about it. You say you're fine, but of course it, it can have very serious long-term effects. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm sure there are serious long-term effects, but that's not the reason I'm talking about it. I'm talking about it because I would like something to be done about it. You know, uh, you know. Only the, one of the reasons I started talking about it recently was there was understandably huge concern uh, regarding uh, certain events in the sporting context, and in the same week, you know, there was a report of a Glasgow woman who had literally been strangled and beaten to death. And there was no publicity about that at all. You know, it's so normal in the west of Scotland that that poor woman was beaten to death. And, you know, nobody was talking about it. So, you know, if it changes that, then it would be worth it. Does there need to be more social stigma around this as well for the perpetrators? You know, rather than I, perhaps I, sometimes people knowing what's going on behind closed doors but turning a wee bit of a blind eye? Definitely. But, you know, I know from my own personal experience that women cover it up. You know, there's a shame, although... They have nothing to be ashamed about because they're victims. 
you know, they'll go into work and say that I slipped and banged my face in the fridge and stuff like that, you know. So anything that encourages people to talk about it out in the open, in, in, in my view, is a good thing. But as I say, I'm not an expert on it. You know, there are people out there who are experts. I see it. I still see it because I'm in a job where I'm confronted by it, you know, and I don't like it. And uh, all I'm really trying to do is start some sort of debate so that something's done about it, so that, you know, in 50 years, you know, it's 50 years since I went through it, but uh, has anything changed, you know, in those 50 years? Well, I was going to ask you that, you know, do, do you think there's been any sort of improvement at all in, in, in how how we deal with this, uh, this, this whole issue? Well, you know, I don't know whether there's been any improvement, but there hasn't been enough improvement if women are still being beaten to death in their own houses and it isn't even important enough to feature the newspaper. That's, you know, I don't think that's improvement. Uh, Angela Constance, the Justice Secretary, says of what you're proposing, we're keen to understand the details of this and similar proposals and how they could interact with existing measures in order to give it due consideration. I presume you're open to talking to her and others uh, about yeah. this. Listen, I'm, I'm open to talking to anybody, but talking's not going to change it, Gary. You know, there needs to be action. I'm, I'm, I'm happy, obviously, that I'm prepared to talk about it, but just talking about it, it's not going to change anything. There's got to be action. Well, look, thanks very much indeed for speaking to us this morning. That is uh, Thomas Ross, KC. And uh, if you do need support, uh, the Justice Secretary makes clear in her statement you can contact Scotland's 24-hour domestic abuse and forced marriage helpline. That number is 0800 027 1234. That's 0800 027 1234. 8.42, 80 minutes to nine. You're listening to...